Zion Williamson was supposed to be one of the most exciting stories of this NBA season, but unfortunately he has yet to make his debut after undergoing surgery to remove a damaged piece of meniscus from his knee, and now we're approaching the eight week time mark since his surgery and there's still really no indication of exactly when he's gonna come back and what the rest of his season might look like. This type of injury at such an early stage in his career has only added to the discussion about his overall injury risk profile and in particular brought up some questions about the sustainability of a long-term career at his current playing weight. Welcome back everyone to your number one source for learning about everything related to sports injuries and sports medicine news. In this video, I'm gonna actually review some of the scientific research behind why I think this is actually a reasonable discussion to have, particularly in the context of his meniscus injury that he just had. We'll first take a look at player data from the past 20 years to point out just how much of a size anomaly Zion actually is. We'll then take a look at the scientific evidence that in my opinion, backs up and justifies this discussion. And then finally, we'll talk about what, if anything, a player like Zion in this situation might try to do about this. Make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on so you can stay up to date with the latest breaking injury news. Also, a quick tease, you're gonna wanna be subscribed because my next video is gonna talk about what I think is the one big thing that a player like Zion and someone like John Morant should be doing right now to prevent them from having a career devastating injury. I'm far from the first person to bring up this question about Zion's career longevity playing at such a high body weight. But I think this video is important because we need to put some actual context and evidence behind why I feel this is a justified discussion. Also, I don't think this discussion about his weight would be as valid without the meniscus injury that he recently had, and we'll talk later about why that's true. Let's start off by putting Zion's physical build in some context with the rest of the NBA. This graph shows the BMI of every player to start the 2019-2020 NBA season. Take a wild guess who this outlier is up here at the top. That's right, this is Zion, and as you can see, not only does he have the highest BMI of any player this season, it also certainly looks to be even more of an outlier compared to the rest of the NBA. In fact, if we overlay the official guidelines for what BMI levels are considered obese, Zion is the only current player in the NBA who would be technically labeled as obese. If we look where some other bigger players fall on here, we can see Nikola Jokic at 27.6, LeBron 26.8, Giannis 24.7, Joel Embiid at 27.2, James Harden 26.1, and Steph Curry at 23.1. If we move away from BMI at 284 pounds, Zion is actually tied for the third highest body weight in the NBA with Nikola Jokic. Number two is Boban at 290, and then number one is Taco Fall at 311. Oh, and by the way, Zion is also the shortest of this group by quite a bit at just six foot six. Let's take this a step even further to drive home my point of just how much of an anomaly Zion's build is. We would have to go back nearly 15 years to Shaquille O'Neal in the 2003-2004 season to find an NBA player with a higher BMI than Zion had to start this year. In fact, going back 20 years in the NBA, Zion has the third highest BMI. The top five includes Dexter Pittman at five at a BMI of 31.4, then Robert Trailer with the fourth highest, Zion at number three, Shaq at number two, and then Oliver Miller at number one with the highest BMI in the past 20 years. Looking at the playing style of these guys, Zion stands out even more. He's playing more of a point guard style with his explosive ability, his jumping, his hard cuts, compared to the rest of these guys who really were more pure centers and power forwards. Now I can read your mind and a lot of you are probably thinking, Brian, BMI is not a good measure at all to use to describe someone like Zion. And yeah, that's a fair criticism to make. BMI is a calculation of sort of the ratio between someone's weight and height. It's used across all fields of medicine when it comes to predicting things like heart disease risk, diabetes, just general health, and it's trying to basically get at some description of how much fat you have or how inappropriate your body weight might be either too high or too low. It's commonly used as a risk factor for a lot of different medical conditions, and so it's one of the best and most widely used descriptors we have in medicine. The problem with BMI, though, as it relates to someone like Zion, is it doesn't do a very good job of accurately describing someone who's either excessively tall or excessively short. A classic example of this is if we look at Taco Fall. BMI would classify him as overweight, but all you have to really do is look at a photo of him to know that he's not fat. He's not really overweight by what we would typically think. There are some other tools that try to do a better job of this for people who are really tall or really short. One of them is called the triponderal or corpulence index, 
And while it's most commonly used for pediatric populations, it tries to do a better job of accounting for height differences, especially in people that are more adolescent age. But even if we look at this measure, Zion is still so far away from everybody else in the league. So yes, we have to make the point that BMI is not the best tool when it comes to trying to describe someone's body composition and sort of weight appropriateness if they're really tall like Zion. But this is the metric we see in all of the research studies. And if you look at it relative to the rest of the NBA, I still think seeing how much of sort of an outlier Zion is makes this a useful metric to look at. So bottom line with this point, Zion is an outlier when it comes to his overall size and weight, especially in the context of the position he plays and the style of basketball he plays. Now let's connect this to his meniscus surgery to explain why I think this is justified to talk about. As you probably know, Zion underwent surgery to remove a damaged piece of meniscus from the lateral compartment of his knee. We did a video on it before, go check it out if you wanna learn more about those details. For the sake of this video though, just think of the meniscus as a cushion in the knee that's helping to minimize the direct amount of load on the bones. Obviously, if you take out a piece of that cushion, then you're going to lose that ability to distribute that load and therefore put additional load directly on the bones and directly on the cartilage. If we think short-term about Zion's body weight in relation to his meniscus surgery, there is some research talking about patient outcomes after meniscus surgeries based on their body weight. A 2013 study of patients who had a part of their meniscus removed surgically showed good improvement across all weight classes compared to before the surgery. But in the group of individuals who were considered obese based on their BMI, they had significantly less improvement than the other weight classes and their improvement in recovery course was a lot slower. The meniscus transmits around 50 to 75% of the load through the knee whenever it's straight and around 85% of the load through the knee when the knee is bent. As a whole, the meniscus decreases the peak contact stress in the knee by around 100 to 200%. And it's not like you have to take out the whole thing to see this much of a difference in terms of the stress on the knee. One study found that by removing just 75% of one specific spot of the meniscus called the posterior horn, it had the equivalent effect of basically taking out the entire meniscus itself. Every little part of the meniscus works together to give it its whole function, and so just removing a piece of it really affects the entire thing to a degree. We also know that the meniscus on the inside and outside compartments of the knee have different shapes and therefore different effects on the stress in the knee. Research models have shown that removing part of the lateral meniscus has a greater effect on the resultant stress in the knee compared to moving a piece of the medial meniscus and Zion had his surgery on that outer meniscus. So hopefully you can understand just from this, the importance of having a good structurally intact meniscus that can help transmit the load seen throughout the knee. Tying this all into body weight, we can really see where this discussion is justified. A 2005 study showed that every one pound decrease in body weight resulted in a fourfold reduction in the amount of stress seen at the knee. In other words, this means that your knee sees roughly four times the amount of weight as what you have in your body. So if somebody loses 10 pounds, we can estimate around 40 pounds of reduced load at the knee. In medicine, there's a very clear relationship between arthritis and obesity. The risk of developing arthritis is roughly five times higher for someone who's overweight compared to normal weight. So what I'm trying to do here is show you guys these interactions between a person's body weight, the health and integrity of their meniscus, and the resultant forces that are seen at their knee. This all matters when we're talking more long-term about a person's health. These are things that probably aren't going to do much to influence this season or next season, but are things that we have to think about in terms of a 10 year career or a 15 year career as this all progresses over time. So I've laid out some of the evidence for why I think this is a reasonable discussion to have. Now, what do I think should be done about it? I will say, I don't think this is an easy question to answer. Some might say it's simple. He should just go lose 25, 30 pounds. The problem with that argument though, is Zion plays the way he does at his current body weight. And that's a part of his playing style and of his athletic ability. If he drops a significant amount of weight, then he runs the risk of changing his body's explosive power and just changing the way that he's able to play. I definitely don't think Zion should be targeting a certain BMI. He'd have to lose over 25 pounds to drop from the technically obese category down to the overweight category. And that really shouldn't be the goal. I think the thing to focus on, not just for Zion, but for any professional athlete, who's had some sort of joint damage or injury should be to optimize their body weight to the best of their ability while still staying somewhat within the confines of how they play the game. We don't want Zion to go and lose a bunch of muscle that might change the stability of his joints and change the way he plays, but it is important to think about how an overall just high body weight could have these effects throughout a long-term NBA career. That's it for the video, everybody. 
Thank you as always for watching. Let me know any questions or comments below. I hope you learned something. Let me know what you guys think. What should his playing weight be? Do you think he's fine where he's at? What are your thoughts on this whole conversation? Until next time though, thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you haven't yet, click down here to go subscribe. Stay up to date whenever I release a new video. Also go check out some other recommended videos that I think you guys will enjoy and head over to my page where we've got some great playlists about everything from NFL injuries, more NBA news, to things like the UFC and boxing. Whatever sport you enjoy, I'm sure you can find something on my page to kind of pique your curiosity and help learn some more about what's going on. See you guys in the next one.